new firmware, who this? That's right, folks. Uh, if you haven't been on a rock lately, you probably heard the announcement. Nikon just announced the release of the new firmware 2.0 coming out for the Z9 here in the next couple of days. Uh, by the time you're watching this video, either the firmware is out or it's coming out in the next couple of days. Either way, I want to come out here and give my thoughts unscripted, talk about what I like about the firmware, uh, my thoughts on Nikon in general, and just give some general feedback on the Nikon Z9 camera. I'm recording on the Z9 right now. I have my Atomos here on top of my thing, like recording the screen. So you can see the settings. I'm recording in 4K ProRes, which is, you know, I don't even record in ProRes. I'm recording in ProRes because this is, this is a time for celebration for Nikon. So I got to bring out all the stuff. You see, I got the Z9 shirt on. You see it, all right? All right, big Nikon, all right? Uh, <laughs> right when the Z9 was first announced or released, Nikon had promised that there were gonna be some updates coming down the pipeline to make this an even more capable camera, and they have delivered on their promise. Uh, we have a brand new update coming out, which gives the Nikon Z9 the 8K60 raw video that they talked about. Uh, even other features like 4K 60 RAW, uh, 4K RAW, 4.1K, 8.3K, DCI, you know. Basically, if you're into video, if cinema is your thing, if you're trying to be a feature filmmaker and you bought a Z9, you should have nothing holding you back at this point. Uh, yeah, this camera can do pretty much all. This is pretty much like a mini RED. Like, you know, RED cameras are doing 8K RAW and now you have that in a Z9. So, in my opinion, this firmware pretty much cements the Nikon Z9 as the best uh, photo video mirrorless hybrid in the game at this point, in my opinion. My favorite thing about the new update are as follows. Of course, the autofocus, the new autofocus algorithm, the new autofocus modes, the resizable box is amazing. That's what I've been waiting for is something like that. And uh, Nikon delivered. I wasn't a big fan of the old Nikon like large area. This wasn't big enough for me. Uh, I wanted the ability to either have bigger, a bigger box or to be able to resize it. I love the resizing option. I love that they give you two, two custom resizing slots. That's, that's great. I love that. Um, I also love that they improved the autofocus a little bit. The autofocus is already great. Like I had no issues with this camera. I've shot like a wedding in low light, had no issues with shooting a wedding. Um, pictures came out great. Uh, what else? Oh, and improved 4K 60. So, the 4K 60, you know, I had no issues with it. It looked fine, like it was sharp enough. But now you have an option for even sharper 4K 60, uh, which is amazing. And then as well, if you're into that, like you can now increase the frames per second. So it's a 60 frames per second EVF. Now you can do 120 frames. Honestly, the EVF is fine. I had no issues. 60 frames work for me. I doubt I'll take advantage of the 120. The only features I'll probably actually take advantage of with this firmware are the autofocus box and maybe the sharper 4K60. I'm not a big video guy, so the 8K60 RAW is cool, but it's just bragging rights. I can just brag and say, oh, my camera can do this. Can your camera do that? But I'm not really gonna use it, so. Um, Nikon also released a like a presentation basically talking about their future plans, which I thought was interesting. They mentioned in that that they had planning on putting more focus on like video and content creators. I think that's amazing that they want to really start taking video and content creation seriously. I believe by them putting these features, the features that they put in this update, especially in with the Z9, that's a great start. I think what they need to do next is make something that's just as competitive, but like at the, you know, a smaller body, basically, a smaller, more affordable body. So I don't know how good, how clear the rumors are on a Z8 R or a Z63 or a Z73, but in my opinion, if Nikon would make something like a Z63 or a Z8, and it doesn't even have to do 8K, it can do like 4K 60, 4K 120. I think that would be amazing for Nikon to put something like that, especially also with the improved autofocus that we're getting in the Z9. I love that Nikon is putting more focus on video features and they want to take content creation seriously. I believe the gift and the curse in that is that Nikon kind of slacked on video for so long that nobody took them serious as a video, video like a video camera or something like solid for video. So they've come up with pretty much the best mirrorless video camera and there's nobody really to really um, sing its praises in the video form, right? You have lots of photographers who talk about how great it is of a photography camera, but there's no real great video content creators. Yes, Jerry Jonas made a music video, that's cute, but I think that in the Nikon space, they need like really talented video creators like 
say a Peter McKinnon or a Matty Hapoya, uh, maybe like a, a Potato Jet or something like that, YC Imaging, like somebody in the video space. I think it's D4 Darius, he's really talented. Somebody in the cinema or filmmaking space to really embrace the Nikon system, to really show like what this thing can do because as talented as you think I might be, I'm a photographer, my bias is in photography, and yeah, I do videos and I like to make little short videos, but I'm not in-depth video creator. I'm not like a filmmaker, so um, I'm not gonna be the one to really sing its praises and show what you really can do for that. So it sucks, but it is what it is. So um, hopefully in the future, Nikon will get in touch with some of these better video creators and they will be able to kind of show uh, what this camera can do. There is a current video floating around of this video team that made like a music video for a South African um, music, I think it's Mutata, I believe the name is. Anyways, they're showing like how great the Nikon can do video for a music video and how well it did. Um, and that's cool, but we need more stuff like that. So uh, yeah, we need more video creators to jump on board to really sing Nikon's praises. So, oh, also, so, you know, with the introduction of these new video features and Nikon's being more competitive in the video space, also, the gift and the curse is Nikon doesn't have a cinema line to protect, so we're able to get all of these great features in a camera like the Z9. People are talking about like, you know, Nikon should maybe release a cinema line, like a Nikon ZC, something more like a FX6 type of build or a, you know, C, Canon C300 type of build, something like that that's like a big cinema rig with internal NDs, XLR inputs, you know, all of that stuff. That would be great, right, if Nikon did that. But then also I think what will happen is, is if Nikon does decide to take cinema even more seriously and make like a cinema camera, then we won't get features like that in the Z9. Because they don't have a cinema line to protect, we're able to get all of these features in the Z9. The next Z8 that comes out can do 4K RAW, 4K 60 with no issues. But if Nikon starts making like a Nikon cinema line, the next Z or whatever comes out won't have all of these great features. So there's kind of a gift and a curse in that. Like if they do embrace cinema, we're gonna lose all of these updates and all these features that we're getting because that's just what happens. Like if you look at the Sony um, line of cameras and the Canon line of cameras, as great as those cameras are, if you want the best of the best in terms of cinema, you have to buy the cinema line. So there's always gonna be some kind of compromise somewhere. So. And that's another issue I had recently. So the other Friday, I was recording a video of myself doing some tutorial stuff for MagMod. And I tried out 8K just because I haven't yet. Um, I think I got maybe six minutes into the recording before it overheated. And then 4K, I did 4K. And I'm not even using the fastest memory card. So I know I'm not doing like the highest bit rates, but in it, I overheated it. Uh, continually on both 8K and 4K. Uh, I mean, just to ease your mind, I had somebody shooting B-roll of me with my A1 um, in 4K 60 constantly, and we have eventually ran into it. It wasn't six minutes, um, but we we did eventually run into overheating um, very quick. That's just my thoughts on that. Um, if they do do it, great, but also think about the implications of what that means for future cameras coming out so yeah what a time to be a Nikon shooter man I don't I don't I don't remember the last time Nikon had this much hype around them you know outside of like a D3 when they talk about is the Z9 a D3 moment it's pretty much a D3 moment now with these new features with these new firmware updates uh like I said it pretty much puts the Z9 on top now I know some of you are probably still waiting to get your hands on the Z9 Hopefully you'll get those soon. Um, also, when I talk about the next camera coming out, this is my opinion. I kind of be listening. This is what you need to do, right? The next camera needs to come out ASAP. Let's say it won't be here until next year. What Nikon needs to do and what a lot of criticism that they get is Nikon is not very good at communicating. I agree, they don't really communicate very well with their user base, in my opinion. Um, I think that let's say Nikon is working on the next Z8. If it's coming out this year, great. If not, he needs to, <laughs> or next year. But I think that Nikon should maybe put out some kind of like development announcement, right? Kind of what they did with the Z9, like, hey, say June, yeah, say like May, June, late May, June, they put up an announcement, hey, Nikon is announcing they're gonna start developing another mirrorless camera with great video features, improved autofocus, you know, all that stuff, right? They put out that. 
that gets the rumor mill jumping, that gets people talking, that gets some people excited, right? Then maybe September, October, they show off the camera. They say, hey, they start doing teasers and say, they do the announcement and say, hey, here's the camera, September, October. Then they can be like, coming soon, first quarter or the beginning of 2023. What that does is that for the people who are waiting and speculating on the next camera and when it's coming out, that gives them something to look forward to. There are probably people waiting that are like, should I go out and buy Sony because I don't have enough money for the Z9. Even if I do have the money for the Z9, I can't get one. And I haven't heard anything about the next thing coming out. Should I just go out and buy the next camera? Um, that gives things for those people something to look forward to. Uh, and also, as far as like firmware, like I'm not sure what they're doing with the Z62 and the Z72. The new update that came out did have improved autofocus improvements for the Z62 and the Z72. I also own the Z62 and I also own the OG Z6. So shout out to them for, you know, even improving those cameras. But, you know, a lot of people are still waiting for the big, the big update for the Z62, Z72. Uh, and it hasn't happened yet. The Z, the original Z6 got like a ton of awesome updates. The Z6 got the raw update. They got the eye autofocus improved. They even got even more autofocus in features. So what Nikon did with the Z6 leads me to believe that the Z6 II still has room to grow, but with this Z9 and the jump of technology and autofocus and improvements and like uh, picture quality and video quality, people are hungry for that and something um, less expensive and more compact. So, and yeah, that's it. I think um, I think Nikon is on the right track. Like I said, they put out they they're talking about 50 new lenses by 2025. Hopefully that works. Like they came out with the 28 to 75. I did a review on that lens. It's an amazing lens, the 28 to 75. Uh, Nikon, if you're listening, 16 to 35 2.8, please, or 15 to 35 or whatever in that range. Uh, 16 to 35 2.8 would bless me okay and that would be the next one that i bought really so i gave my thoughts on the firmware and what i think about it uh my timer is running low let me actually hit the record <laughs> i got like 30 seconds left Jeez. anyway so you guys i gave my thoughts on the firmware let me know what you think uh about the firmware let's start the conversation below what do you think nikon needs to do to like improve and make it even better um what do you think does this make the Nikon the number one cam camera? If you don't think so, let me know why. I'm here to debate. I'm about to be in the comments with y'all, uh, but I'm gonna stop now because I got, it's, it's about to quit. So anyways, we're gonna cut this short. Thank you for, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, we out. Oh, geez, oh, uh, <laughs> the Atomos. <laughs> oh, I stopped to record the Atomos. Um, <clears throat> yeah, geez. I don't know, should I still keep, should I keep talking? This is not, this is the animals now. It's not even going through that. Even this, even this, the, the fact that I can see what, anyways, y'all don't understand. Y'all don't understand, okay? Nikon is back. It is cold.